Welcome traders to this week's weekly market live analysis and trade session with me, Patrick Munley. Uh, just going to give it another 20 seconds here. Let's uh, let people get in. Um, if you can hear me and you can see the tick mill welcome screen on your screen, uh, if you could type a Y in the chat box, that would be great so that I know we'll, uh, we're ready to roll. <clears throat> Okay, so that's one o'clock UK time, and we are going to, uh, to get going here. So uh, before we do jump into today's content, uh, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Importantly for uh, today's presentation, uh, the views expressed by me uh, or opinions expressed by me here today are solely mine. They uh, are not indicative or representative of Tickmill UK or Tickmill <coughs> Europe Limited. So just to be clear on that, uh, for those that are here for the first time today, a uh, brief introduction to myself. My name is Patrick Munley and after I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. And after a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to, to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or more appropriately, day gambling the S&P 500. And after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into what would prove to be significant losing positions. Uh, ultimately giving back all my gains and experiencing a six-figure uh, financial hit to my personal capital. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. And it was at this point I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, uh, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching and developing a strategy that suited my personality, extensively back and forward testing that strategy and developing a rigorous risk management approach to underpin it. But most importantly, um, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift I made was from being a highly goal orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, understanding the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or a string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, I've been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. And you can see uh, the performance data for that uh, managed account service on the screen. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Uh, since 2010, I've also personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, webinars and live presentations on a range of topics, from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my uh, fund management, and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert for Tickmill, where I provide uh, daily market analysis and trade analysis. Uh, you can actually access this through the Tickmill blog, uh, 
posts are, are made uh, each day, or you can put your uh, email into the, uh, the email window there and subscribe and you'll get the updates delivered uh, directly to your inbox. Um, I guess my other uh, passion project is as head of trading and trading education uh, for a leading trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. We offer both development and funding, more importantly, to uh, retail trading talent. At FX Swap, we don't just develop retail traders market and trading strategy knowledge, we work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And for those that are interested, uh, you can see on the screen there, there's a number you can call the trading desk in London, or you can email the guys uh, to request further information about what it is we do at FX Career Swap, and they will get back to you in a timely fashion with, uh, with all the relevant information. So that's, uh, that's a flavor of where I'm coming from. And uh, now let's jump into the charts. Um, before, we, before I go through uh, looking at some specific charts that I've marked up with where I see some potential opportunities, what I thought we'd do um, today, because I've had a bunch of questions with respect to um, how I identify potential uh, trade locations. I talk uh, quite often about symmetry swings and equality swings, uh, my Fibonacci uh, timing levels. Um, so what I thought I'd do is I'd, uh, I'd get rid of the, uh, the markup here that I've got on the, the dollar index chart, because this is the one I've been tracking uh, very closely at the moment. And what I thought I'd do is actually walk you through how I identify uh, the potential trade location or, or a potential action area. And, uh, and so then you can start to see how it is I, uh, I develop or understand where the potential opportunities are with respect to the market. So this is the dollar index. This is uh, the uh, broad-based dollar index versus six um, other currency pairs. The reason why it's important to track the dollar index or certainly to understand where the dollar is, is um, because the dollar is responsible for the majority of uh, transactions within the global foreign exchange market. So if you're gonna be trading any of these major FX pairs, the major counterpart is always gonna be the dollar. And so to, to really understand and grasp um, positioning and sentiment within the market, you always wanna have a finger upon where the dollar is or, or certainly have a, an idea um, what phase the dollar is in, and that will inform then your trading with respect to uh, to these other FX majors. So this is the re just pulling up the recent um, phase of price action in the dollar. So uh, as we can see here, the last swing high was in uh, end of September. We had a, uh, a downdraft corrective phase here, and then we broke down again and, um, and ultimately made a low here at the beginning of the year. And so when I look at this chart, what I'm looking for is the, is what I want to identify is the last impulsive move. So when I talk about an impulsive move, it means that the last trend move within the market. And so clearly uh, to my, or to my mind anyway, uh, we have this swing high here and then we have this breakdown. And so this is the last impulse leg that we have. And so when I talk, when I'm thinking about impulse legs, what I ideally want to be able to do is identify a, uh, a swing, an, an Elliott wave cycle. I, did, I don't get into, um, you know, I'm not losing my mind about being able to identify uh, the Elliott wave structure. What I want to be able to do is identify or, or be able to eyeball the, you know, and an ideally a five, five wave structure. And, um, and then that's going to give me the impulse leg that we're, that we're currently uh, potentially trading against. So this is the last uh, down move that we saw in terms of the dollar index heading into this January low. And so once we've got this piece of information here in terms of the, the last trend move, then what we're thinking about is a corrective phase. And um, with respect to corrections, what we're looking for is at a minimum ideally is going to be a 50 about a 50 percent correction of the last leg down so if we bring in the uh the fib tool here and we just overlay that versus our swing high and our swing low 
And then what we're going to be looking for is how price corrects against that, uh, that impulse move. And more often than not, what we're looking for is a three wave corrective move. Okay, so that in, in Elliott wave terms, it's, a, it's what they refer to as an ABC move. And um, what I like to also do to help uh, give me some targets with respect to uh, those corrective moves is identify um, the last corrective leg in terms of a symmetry swing. Um, so what, what, what I mean when I talk about a symmetry swing is I'm looking at this phase of price action here. Let me, uh, so we have, this was the last major correction prior to the move to the downside. So what I'm anticipating is in terms of scope and scale, once we've got this low in place, I'm looking, uh, ideally what I'd like to see is, an, is a symmetry swing in terms of the, uh, certainly the, uh, the price movement. More often than not, you'll, they'll be replicated in time, but certainly the price level is of interest to me. So once, I, um, once I've got that and I'm able to identify that swing, what I do is I take uh, what's called the trend-based FIB extension tool, and I just overlay that versus the swing low. And so that gives me another price target. So just to recap, I'm looking for a, a minimum of 50% retracement. I'm also looking for ideally a test of, the of, a, of a symmetry swing objective. And also what I'm looking for is what I call an equality objective. And an equality objective is simply an equidistant swing. So once we have a swing high and a reaction low in place, I'm overlaying the uh, FIB extension tool to measure an equality move versus this swing here against the swing low. So in this instance, the equality move would have taken us up to uh, 91.76. Now, we don't necessarily always trade to the pip into that area, but certainly within 10 pips or so, if we see a reaction there, then that provides uh, an interim trading opportunity. Um, and you can see here, we traded up just shy. We got to 91.62. We were looking for 91.76. We got this bearish outside reversal candle and we rolled over. Now, what's important here is, and I, I cover this in many of the weekly uh, market reviews that I do, is that we didn't make a new low in price before the RSI stochastic started to tick up again and we took out the prior swing here. So what that suggests to me then is that I need to remeasure my equality swing versus the new swing low. So let me just get rid of that. And what we want to do is we want to pull this down to here and this over to here, and then we get a new target level. So now you can see how we're starting to build out this area where we potentially see price heading. And where, where the area of interest for us now is at this 92 level, got the 50% retracement just ahead of 92, got the symmetry swing at 92.11, and then we've got the equality objective versus A, B, C at 92.09, okay? So we've got this, this cluster of um, FIB ratios and swings and equality swings all lining up in this target zone. And what you've got to bear in mind is I was, we were tracking this level from the point that we, that we made this low and took out this swing high. So obviously this, you know, you can see uh, this is somewhat retrospective or high, with hindsight here. But if you go back through my videos um, on the Tickmill website, you'll see how I was identifying this uh, well in advance of us trading into this area. Now, another tool you can use to help pinpoint where these potential reversal areas are likely tra to transpire is what's called a FIB-based time extension. And so it's really just using um, the same logic if we're looking at FIB retracements and FIB extensions, that it makes sense that FIB time extensions should also come into play. And so what we have here is the FIB tool that extends from this swing high to this sw swing low into the future with respect to a time frequency. And so where we trade up here into 
the uh, we, we well we exceed the 50% retracement we trade just shy of the 61.8% retracement and notably we're trading just around the 61.8% fib extension in terms of time from this swing low and it's in this zone here so we come we come within a day basically of touching that and within a couple of ticks of touching the 61.8% retracement and we get this big outside reversal candle. So what we had here, or what you can, what you're able to, to achieve in advance is identify really a, a window. Let me draw this in for you and you can see. So if we think in terms of our minimum objective for a retracement uh, from a fib retracement perspective being the 50% level, and then we think in terms of um, the time zone that we're watching. So what we're really looking at is this 61.8% uh, retracement, 61.8% uh, extension in time. And then we have this cluster of um, of, fib, of fib retracements in terms of price, all suggesting that we should see that or there is a high potential or high probability for a retracement to occur or, or for this move, this corrective move to terminate in and around this 92 to 92.50 area. This purple line here represents the a projected monthly range resistance. So that's an additional tool. Above there, we just have the, uh, the orange line which represents a weekly projected range resistance. And so what we're able to do is build or, or, get, or give ourselves a, a zone where we're likely to see this corrective move potentially terminate, okay? And by the time we get up here, the RSI stochastic is into overbought territory. And we're starting to see the psych run into resistance as well. And then we get this big outside reversal candle. And that's our signal or versus, or how I trade anyway, um, that's what I'm looking for, these reversal candles in these high probability or high potential reversal zones. And then once we see that, then we've got our signal in terms of the potential for this correction to be completed. And you can see we've seen a bit of a sell off here in the dollar at the moment. Looks like we'll probably get down now and test um, monthly range, uh, sorry, weekly range support down to that 91.30. But knowing this and knowing and having this information about the do, about the dollar index, then you can uh, then you can set then you can start to think to yourself, right? If this is what's happening in the dollar, then this mean, this should mean in theory that pairs like the euro, sterling, Aussie, Kiwi, Swissy are all likely to be finding some strength. Uh, so I can't find the range level indicator. I know it's a mix of um, The range level indicator is here. I'll just pull this up for you guys and you can uh, find it. It's a free indicator um, on, uh, on TradingView. There it is, ADR, high, low. And then that will give you these weekly and monthly. And you can all, if you go down into intraday charts, it will also give you daily uh, range resistance levels. So that's how I identify these uh, areas where corrections are likely to terminate. And so then that sets up a high probability uh, trading zone or trading or, or potential trading zone uh, to pay attention to. Does that make sense to everyone? If, if you've been able to follow along, could you just type a Y in the chat box so that I know that, uh, that I've explained that to the best of my ability? Good stuff. Okay, so with that said, um, the dollar index has reversed from uh, from this area. We've also got we also bring in a uh, a trend line here. You can see we've just advanced of that trend line, and so what we'd anticipate now, if we look at a trend line here as well, is that um, certainly we can get down into the uh, weekly range support is the next downside objective. Through there, we look for, and it, this is in terms of in terms of the trading as well. This is important when you're thinking about targets and you're thinking about objectives for your trades. It's all it's the the same principle in terms of using these prior swings is useful for identifying your targets because 
that you're, you're getting a, a realistic expectation of what's possible for the next move. So these range levels work really well in terms of identifying targets. And then once you get beyond the range levels and the pivots, then you can think about testing trend lines. So the dollar index pulling back here. Um, let's just start. I've got a bunch of charts marked up here where I see potential opportunities. So I'm just going to uh, run through these now. S&P 500 um, trading into weekly range resistance. Here's another example where we held the equality objective. I'll just draw this in for you so you can see uh, what I mean. We talked about this a few weeks ago, but uh, just to follow up on what we were talking about. So the equality objective is A, B, C, uh, sorry, A, B, and this is the C leg, 37.33, and we traded to 37.20 uh, before reversing. We've now taken out this trend line resistance so we watch now to see how price reacts at weekly range resistance. If we get through there, uh, then we should expect to trade up into monthly range resistance and the ascending trend line here. So we're looking at 40, 20, 40, 30 as the obje upside objective um, for the S&P 500. NASDAQ, bullish, testing weekly range resistance. If we can get through this weekly range resistance, then the next upside objective is going to be these prior highs, 13,358, and the monthly range resistance, 13,444. We've seen uh, the Dow Jones is taking out now this uh, projected ascending trend line resistance. Note that we've had one, two, three, four. This is the fifth test of that trend line. And for those who are on the, the, the trading team, the FX career swap trading team with me, I, I, I always pay attention to the third test. The fourth test is like likely to be the precursor for a break. So I'd be looking for the Dow Jones to trade up now into uh, 33,000 territory. The DAX in Germany. <laughs> now the DAX is making a third test of this ascending trend line. We have the monthly range resistance, 14,600. We have the weekly R3 at 14,600. So what I'm actually looking for here in the DAX is the potential for a pullback um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of the DAX. We've got some nice momentum divergence down here. So watching for various reversal patterns here. And I think we could see, uh, we could see a bit of a corrective phase in the DAX. Talked about the dollar. Um, check in with these 10 year yields. These yield charts are very important at the moment. It's driving a lot of the price action. And, um, and we can see that we, we're correcting here. I'm watching now for a test of this, um, of this ascending trend line support. This is really defining the strength of the current trend. So any move back into this 140 area, watch for bullish reversal patterns. And I think we could be looking for the next leg to the upside in terms of these yields, ultimately looking for a test through 2%. The key to uh, whether or not this, this move is gonna be is terminating at current levels will really be is if we took out trend line support and the monthly pivot back down here at 136, uh, that would suggest that we're heading back into the prior range at 130. But for now, remain bullish these yields uh, whilst we hold 140 as support. Silver, uh, sorry, gold, bounce from the support area that we talked about, this ascending trend line support. Watch now for resistance at this 1760, bearish reversal patterns here I'd be looking at short positions to test the equality objective. So again, talking about these equal legs. So we have A, B, and then the C is 1653. And then from there, I think we could see a more meaningful correction, certainly getting up to test 1800. Silver, <coughs> this is one I've got running myself at the moment. Uh, looking for a move up to retest basically this 30 level in silver and um, and ultimately pr we probably see a pullback from that third test but then on the fourth or the fifth test I'm actually looking for silver to break out to the upside versus this ascending triangle pattern that we're currently trading in in terms of silver crude I'm still uh, still looking for a test of this ascending trend line would be the third test and that will be a buy zone for me, but nothing to do at the moment. 
Copper still consolidating, but uh, holding support at the 390 level. And while it does, I think we get up into the top side of this uh, projected ascending trend channel. Uh, 460 is the level to watch there in terms of copper. Bitcoin had a good week. Um, it's testing the top side of the box now. So we'll see here if we break out through um, prior resistance, then that's going to set up a test of uh, this 60,000 level in terms of weekly range resistance. We have the yearly R3 at 63,000, uh, weekly R3, 61.6. So this is the next target zone if we can get through prior highs in terms of Bitcoin and would negate the idea that we get another swing down here. It looks like we will extend um, but pay attention, we're seeing some significant um, momentum divergence develop. And so this next leg up could uh, precede a more uh, significant correction in terms of Bitcoin, but ultimately still bullish. Dolly Yuan pulling back from uh, weekly and monthly range resistance. I'm looking for a test now of monthly range support and the monthly pivot at 646, and that could potentially set up the next leg to the upside. So uh, watch how we trade in this zone here. Dollar, yen. <coughs> I've got an order to sell this uh, through these prior lows here at 108.20. I think we can easily get down into 107.70 as potential support for the next leg higher and or potentially roll over and get a deeper pullback into monthly projected range support down at 106.35. Swissy, I'm, uh, I'm currently short this one uh, versus this, uh, this outside rejection candle. And again, thinking in terms of the dollar index and the, the potential for the dollar correction to be complete. So it makes sense that the, uh, the Swissy would also be, be pulling back. So we'll, uh, we'll see how this one develops. Looking certainly for a test of 92.11 and uh, the monthly pivot from above at 91.85 will be, will be key then. Could set a base there for the next leg to the upside, but like I say, short at the moment. Euro, I'm uh, currently long. Again, we came into uh, an equal legs objective. So we had, this is our A, B, C, and you can see we basically traded to the pip almost and got some decent buying developing. We're now trading into the weekly pivot, seeing some profit taking. We've got the ECB, Lagarde speaking shortly, so um, likely to see a bit of volatility, but uh, the trade's risk-free for me now, and we'll see. I'm looking for a test, ideally of 120 here, and then we'll see how the market responds. But another example there of these equality objectives playing out. Euro yen, um, I'm looking for a test of the top side here, 130, 50 area, We've got weekly uh, projected range resistance, 168 extension of this prior swing and the uh, trend channel resistance. So watch how price responds here. I think there's an opportunity to do something on the short side, looking for a move back into that 127 at 50, 127, 70 area. Euro sterling, this, uh, this one tested that big, weekly trend line that uh, I was watching. Uh, we've since made a, an equal legs correction back into 85, 56. Watching for bullish reversal patterns here to potentially do something on the long side. It was looking a bit more promising earlier, a little bit weak now, but again, what I'm always paying attention to here is the close. These are daily candles and I'm watching the closes only. Euro Aussie, this is a short I've got running. Um, again, this is, uh, this is risk-free. And again, thinking in terms of equality objectives, uh, sorry, thinking in terms of both equality objectives and being able to identify uh, trend moves. So where we have a wave one and two, what I'm always looking for is once I've got a wave four high in place, then I'm looking at a minimum for wave five to be equal to wave one. And in this instance as well, we can also look at uh, the FIB extensions. So we get a 161 extension of the wave four, which coincides with the equality objective. So my target for this move now will be a test of this, uh, this 149.90, 149.60. And it also brings in this descending trend line support as well. Does that answer your question, Fires, about uh, the Euro Aussie? Hopefully that's, uh, hopefully that's clear. Sterling, 
looking for a test of uh, weekly range resistance 140.34. From there, I think we could see uh, the potential for a pullback uh, back into uh, this, this zone here, the pivot cluster, and then maybe we set a base for the, the next leg to certainly test retest range highs with the potential to trade up into monthly range resistance at 144. Sterling Yen, the area of interest for me is this trend line and weekly range resistance 152 to 152.50, watching for bearish reversal patterns there, similar idea to the Euro Yen, watching for reversal patterns to play for a correction to retest uh, trend channel support 148 and month, uh, sorry, weekly range support 149. Aussie. Seeing an upswing here. Watch how we trade at this 78, just above 78. We've got weekly range resistance. We've got the underside of this prior trend line support. Might, uh, might see a bearish reversal pattern here for a pullback. Uh, if we can get through there, then um, all bets are off and we should trade higher and ultimately get up into the 82 level for the Aussie. Aussie Yen. This one looks like it's going to retest prior highs en route to the uh, monthly range resistance at 87.50. Kiwi. Looks like we should test the 73 level and then there's a potential for maybe some head and shoulders type price action and some consolidation here. Um, the, one trade, the other trade I've got running at the moment is this Kiwi Yen, which I'm long. Got into this, we're testing uh, weekly range resistance. If we can get through there, then I'm looking for a retest of range highs en route to a move up into the 80 level. Um, but again, risk-free position running there from last night. And uh, the other one that's of interest here, just last but not least, is the CAD yen. I'm looking for it to test its trend line resistance monthly range resistance and weekly range resistance 8680 is the area to watch bearish reversal patterns there and i will be looking to to play the cad yen on the short side so that's um that's a short this week this week as i uh, as i want to tune in to listen to uh, to hear what madame lagarde has to say at the ecb in uh, in a few minutes time are there any questions Equally, if there aren't any questions, an N in the chat box is useful so that I know we're, uh, we're all on the same page and everyone's... Uh, I've just talked about the Euro Aussie fires. Yeah, and I do think the, uh, the dollar index has potentially completed three waves and is heading back down. So you'll have to, uh, you'll have to watch the, uh, the recording fires, but essentially I'm short the Euro Aussie and I think we're, uh, we're heading to a target zone of 149.90s, which would complete a, a fifth wave in this, uh, in this trend move. Okay, thanks very much everyone for your time. I hope this was useful and we'll reconvene at the same time next week. Have a great week guys.